I know lots of makers use their digital multimeters all the time, but for me it's one of those tools I only use every so often, and it's frustrating when one of those occasions comes along and it doesn't work. But surely a fresh set of batteries should sort that. But even though my LCD display is now nice and clear, I've still got problems, and the multimeter's picking up no signal, even from a simple continuity test. And while thinking I'd have to consign my trusty Maplin multimeter to the bin, I spotted the magic word fused, and this video is for people like me, who need to know how to change the fuse in a digital multimeter, or even that you can. Now this is obviously the method for my particular model, but my hunch is that others are pretty similar, or even simpler. But it's obvious from reading the label on the back that in our case, we need to get inside the casing, carefully following the safety instructions of course. And with our test leads disconnected, we can start unscrewing screws, starting with the battery compartment, then sliding off the cover and removing the batteries themselves, just to be absolutely safe. Even then we should take care, just in case there are some charged components inside. The back of the casing is held on by three screws, one under the battery compartment lid and two others. Obviously your product may have a different arrangement, but the thing I like about mine is it's just held on with screws, and there are no pesky plastic spring clips that need to be prized apart. And when we've got all three screws out and put to one side safely, I can simply open up the case. And here, as clear as day, are our two fuses. The question being, which is which, and which one needs replacing. Now at the start I said I didn't use the multimeter that often, and for simple continuity tasks, I've got a separate tester, and I can use that to test each fuse in turn, just lifting one end of the fuse out of the clip, so we know we're testing the fuse and not some other part of the circuit. And fuse number one literally gets the green light, so we can push it back into the clip, and repeat the process with fuse number two, which reassuringly fails the test showing us that the fuse is the problem and not some other part of the multimeter. And it can be simply replaced with a similar one of the same rating, which is handily printed alongside on the circuit board, as well as on the front of the unit. Although inside it says 250 milliamps, so that's what I got, ordering a set of three from eBay. Obviously I'll only need one, and that does look different from the old one, being glass instead of ceramic, but the rating is the same, so that really isn't a problem. But before fully clipping into place, I just want to give that a quick test too. And knowing that we're good to go, I can push it into the clip and close the case. Lining up the plastic lugs for the screws and making sure our power cable gets in safely and isn't trapped where the two halves meet. Now all we need to do is replace the three screws that we've kept in a safe place while doing all the work and tighten them up securely before replacing the two AAA batteries and sliding the cover closed, not forgetting that final screw. Now we can put our tester to the test and make sure our fuse replacement has done the trick. So back in with the cables and let's do that continuity test again, which does exactly what it should, dropping from one to nearly zero as the circuit's completed. Then after a bit of delay, we can get on with the job that we got the multimeter out of the cupboard in the first place to do, testing the current draw on my watering monitor, the video for which is coming up soon. But that's it for this one, so I can replace the rubbery case and switch off the multimeter and put it away ready for next time I need it.